Hey Smokers, Draga1 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new, um, still sealed, supposedly, copy of Astral Entertainment's Pack Pack. Now, I'm probably going to have to give a bit of a background to explain what the hell this is and why I am um, unwrapping this. So, I got this, I think it was on Amazon, it was supposedly a new copy. Um, Astral Entertainment is a is a company that used to exist, and you can still go to their website, but you can't really do anything. Um, that used to make these indie games, and actually published, got them published out by, what was it? ValueSoft in this case. And got it actually on some store shelves. Uh, in the case of the, of, in, in the case of this, um, for a little while, I think it was at Walmart and uh, CompUSA. At, at least. It was probably in other places too. And then they went on to just selling their games I have all of them online, and that's mainly where I picked up on Astral Entertainment. However, I didn't really have any interest in Pat Guy or P Guy, the main protagonist of games like Pack of Curse, and then when he made his strange transformation to P Guy in Vengeance or Bust, um, for copyright reasons, you know, Namco, Pac Man, they got in a little trouble there. Um, uh, I didn't, at the time when I first played this, game right here. It was long before I even know who Pat Guy was or anything. This game terrified me as a child. This game had some, I almost want to say, adult violent content in it or something. It scared me so much as a kid that I destroyed the disc. I must have been like eight. I could tell you how old I was exactly. I still have a photocopy of the original receipt for when my mom bought it for me. It was ten dollars. So here's a photocopy of the original sales receipt for... It wasn't this, I got this on Amazon. The original, this got thrown away. Like, holy crap. This is the original, well, photocopy of the CompUSA sales receipt from 1998. I was six years old uh, at the time. And you can actually see some other stuff, the 1,000 Great Games, I don't know if I still have that, but uh, you can also see on there the Magic School Bus. This could have been the, the, the really good one, the Explores the Human Body one. But you can see on here, it says Pack Pack, $10. This is what it was. So, um, back then, uh, you know, being six years old, uh, I stumbled into, you know, this madness. Now... The thing about all of the games that are on here is that I played them all later. You know, I, I, I threw this away, forgot about it. Several years later, probably when I was in middle school, uh, probably when I was, what, 12, 13, I got back into Pack Guy, but I didn't know that it was from this. Yeah, I didn't know this was the same company or anything like that. And I got, and then I actually repurchased the back Pack Pack without knowing that it was this. This is the alternate cover art um, for the pack pack. This is there was no actual jewel case because they ran into some legal issues, and I believe that the pack pack was actually pulled from Walmart store shelves for its violent. I believe it was violent content. Now we all know that Walmart's really persnickety about uh, um, weird stuff in their store. They want everything to be family friendly or whatever. So. Uh, they're probably just overreacting, but, you know, that was the thing. If we take a look at the inner liner for R.A.P. Guy, Astral Entertainment's last game release, we can see the, uh, Collect em Most, Pacula's Curse, Vengeance, or Bust, Isocalypse Now. I ha actually have collected them all, but you can't officially get this one anymore. You can't officially get any of these anymore, at least, I mean, you can actually get most of these, I think, for free now. But, um... This was pulled from store shelves for copyright reasons, and then, of course, we have, you know, the whole Walmart fiasco. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, that's the original cover art. Um, and then that's it right there. They're indicating that they don't sell that at all how it is in that state. This is the R.A.P. Guy game menu from that same case I just showed you. This is sort of their remembrance, all the extra stuff that you never got to see, bonus material, stuff that never made it into games. So we go right here, we have Pack Guy Atomic Edition Too Hot for Walmart. When we click on it, 
mean, you, I can just play it as is, but apparently this is the Atomic Edition that made um, Walmart sad. People who had played this game on the internet upon picking up Pack Black may have noticed that several changes have been made to it uh, to make it more sellable. Uh, apparently Walmart doesn't like arrows knocking heads off of people in their games. Uh, some of the music was changed as well because it has Doom music and Duke Nukem music in it. Uh, and you can, now you can play the most original possible of this version in all of its glory. So you can play, they actually did resell this version of the game in pack, uh, in R.A.P. guy, sort of as a remembrance thing, sort of a farewell kind of thing. But, um, but that, that original version is, I believe, in this original copy of the pack pack. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unwrap it. If we take another look at the uh, R.A.P. guy here, let's take the center liner out and open it. Um, alternate cover. The pack back created when ValueSoft refused to give us the original artwork. So that means that ValueSoft owns this artwork, I suppose. It's an interesting yet very convoluted story so far, so I do apologize. Used in some limited publishing in Europe. So I never saw that, uh, and then the rest of the stuff. Uh, again, this is sort of a remembrance bonus collector's... It's a, it's a long story. I could go on and on about this. But over the years, um, I collect, managed to buy all the games as they were coming out. And again, this is the sort of modified artwork for the Pack Pack. I don't actually know what the original Pack Pack game disc looks like because I haven't opened this yet. I've actually ha have been hanging on to this after I bought it on Amazon for a couple years because I thought that this was, you know, this was the fresh um, shrink wrap. Now, the shrink wrap looks a little rough. If ValueSoft was actually putting something else out, I don't think it would have this level of shrink wrapping. So I'm assuming that this isn't actually new. This has been opened and uh, it's just been rewrapped. So, whether I was deceived or not, I don't really care. What I care about is that I have this original pack pack. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. It's not really worth much as a collector's item. Obviously, I didn't drop a good amount of money to buy a new version. So, I'm going to go ahead and open it. And, you know, it's cracked. So, let's see what it looks like on the inside. Pack pack. Yeah, I could see where they could get into some problems there. Um, that looks exactly like Pac-Man. Um, apparently this runs on Windows 3.1. Excuse me, sir, is that a challenge? You can run this on Windows 3.1? What the hell? Well, I'm not doing this on the Windows 98 machine, no, sir. I'm gonna play this on the Ultimate DOS machine. Alright, so I'm hooking it up to my capture card and stuff right now so I can record screen on this. Um, let's take a look at the actual disc. Is this really new? It looks new. I mean, that's that's shiny. This almost looks totally untouched. Wow. Maybe this is new. I mean, there's a particle somewhere on there, but that's that's pretty much scratch free. Um. Hey, that's Rayman. So this is the uh, this is the pack pack. All uh, right. Or set up. I guess this installs it onto the computer. Or does it? It says it works on Windows 3.1. They better not have lied to me. That should have been the main menu. It makes a, a bar appear across the screen. I bet you it's because it wants 640 by 480. Yeah, I can try and do the really risky step of changing the resolution, but ugh. I work so hard to get it to that resolution, and I really don't want to mess it up. I really don't think that's the issue. I think they're just full of crap fry, and it doesn't frickin' work on Windows 3.1, so I'm going to switch over to the Windows 98 machine. Okay, so... Oh, and there it is. And I don't have audio. It should be playing audio right now. So there it is. So this is familiar to me. Uh, just because 
uh, actually let me mute the audio. This is familiar to me because the newer pack pack, the modified pack pack that doesn't have this ValueSoft logo here, you could probably go to their website by clicking on it, but uh, or that one, um, it doesn't have this because they did away with ValueSoft um, and just had to make their modification. So this right here, and then it didn't have pack guy. I'm pretty sure it didn't have the original pack guy, but I could be wrong. Uh, the original, original pack guy. Um, jeez, man, it's been a while. But um, th this game right here, the first one on the top of the list, Pat Guy, is essentially the same as, as Resurrection, but Pat Guy had like just sort of the solid black eyes instead of like the whites of the eyes and then the iris. You could actually see that it was a real eye. This is just so this is the most original Pat Guy that exists. Um, and this is what has the quote unquote semi violent intro. Now on the newer version of the Pack Pack disc, the other one I showed you a little bit earlier, of course it doesn't have the ValueSoft logo, but the Pack Guy it does have is edited so that it's more family friendly. But you can actually use a key combination while it's starting up to toggle the original intro, and I believe the original intro went like this. Let's just play it as is. Oh my god. Well, that explains everything. Oh my. <laughs> it actually is like that without holding a key combination. It just does it. Wow. So I was six years old when I saw that. And I think it set the stage for me like in Doom in the future because... Hello, listen to the music <laughs> at, during that during that scene there, but oh my god. Like, you'd be deceived as a parent if you bought that and then suddenly the first game they play is freaking... Oh my god, I can't believe that it's still like that. I can't believe I just relived. Like, what, how many years ago? Too many. <laughs> So the rest of the Pack Guy game is the same as Pack Guy Resurrection. I want to say a couple of you have probably played this game or Pack Guy Resurrection. It's a big time downloadable game back in the day. Not really that much else has changed about it. So there's also the Atomic Edition, which apparently was what got it kicked out of Walmart, I guess. Oh, here it is. That was the other one. <laughs> I'm not sure if I tried to play. I don't know if I tried to play this one as well, but that is also familiar. Um, now, the guys at Astral Entertainment, uh, Garth Thompson and Brian Quaffworth, I think his name was, Quaffworth. Um, I didn't look that up, by the way, I just sort of remember that. Um, sort of had this obsession with Doom, Duke Nukem, and Star Trek, and it's all sort of comes together in this game. Oh god, I suck at this. Secret areas are not hard to find at all. And I just beat the whole level. <laughs> now if you lose all your lives, you go back to the previous level. And you actually get some uh, Mega Death here in a second. This is a uh, Tornado of Souls. Uh, the MIDI rendition, that is. This is like the easiest playthrough of this level I've ever played. And then I think the one on the right is fake. Yep. 
sort of do that. <laughs> Neonions. So yeah, what I was saying earlier. the self-destruct sequence, and within a matter of minutes we will both be killed. From hell's heart, I stab at thee. And he escaped. And that's the whole game. I think the modified version has more Doom music in it. Um, pac 2 is, of course, Star Trek Generations. Very heavily inspired. Um, uh, Christmas Edition, pretty obvious. Resurrection is just sort of like an improved. Pack guy convinced that no one cared about it anymore and drank himself to death. Wh wait, what? Hold on. The first game in the series, Pack guy has earned much recognition having been rated the best Pac-Man game, the best classic game, or the best arcade game at various places? What? Come on, Astral, I know you better than this. <laughs> As a Pac-Man ripoff with style, Pac Guy offers much campy fun, having 12 completely different levels and over 100 different sound effects. Discover gimmicks such as shooters and exploding power blocks and shoot 11 different types of nasties. And then this says, Pat guy convinced that no one cared about him anymore, drank himself to death. It turned out he was wrong, so he rose from the dead to continue his quest. Pat guy Resurrection is a new version of the first Pat guy, better in almost every way. It features improved gra graphics, a new intro and ending, as well as one new level. So that means there's two different endings to to Pat guy. Oh, I don't even want to really get into playing it. There you go. And, for those of you wondering, this song is Canyon, which was included with, I believe it was Windows 3.1. I feel like this game is a lot easier to control than... Fuck. And, for those of you curious as to what that was, that was Duke Nukem saying, Those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. Um, just really sped up. It took me a while to realize that, but it is, so, yeah, the guys who made this are just totally obsessed with Duke Nukem, Doom, and Star Trek. <laughs> I just, I mean, it sounds like the story of my life, really. Something called Direction Calculator controls the movement of the, uh, Chompies. It's a plug-in for Multimedia Fusion of some sort. I don't remember the guy who made it, but it's fucking annoying. I can't really predict their movement at all. And for those of you who are curious where the Metal Mosh MIDI came from, it came from this level. Oh my god. This song could actually get me a uh, content ID matched. And this music is from Lemmings! Damn! Whoa, he's big. For some reason this level has a diagonal movement, for no apparent reason. And it's only diagonal down, not up. I guess so you can do that. <laughs> and of course you have another Last Decade song. And then if you can get over here, you actually have another Duke quote that they threw in there. Figure out where it is. What the fuck is it? Damn, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I didn't find it. When you get the flashing square, he says, Gonna rip him a new one. <laughs> and there's your Doom guy. Yeah! 
Oh my god! Oh, skills. Let's see if there's anything different in Pack Guide 2 Pack Goon here. This is where they were in their Ultima phase. And we're using a lot of music from that. I thought that was like the coolest intro ever. Yay, skip. There is no skip. Oh, there is. And the name of this, uh... The name of this song I can't actually remember, because it's in Italian, I think. But it translates to Ten Girls. So I think it's a song about, uh... A guy who sees a lot of women. <laughs> Interestingly. And this is yet another song that was on the last, dec the last decade album, which I just put a bunch of MIDI files on. And this was probably their, their best-looking game until they made Paculus Curse, which was the follow-up to this game. Damn it! Every time. Come on. That's cool, they had like a little window to the outdoor area and then the sort of sunlight is sh like spilling out onto the floor there. Actually, that's how it is for all of the windows. So. Good timing. <laughs> and Mega Man music! To play this as a kid, I didn't grow up with Mega Man. And I just thought this was the music for the game. So I was really confused when I heard it later on. Oh shit! Fuck! Oh ho ho! That was close. What? 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 Oh my god! That's never happened to me. Not once, not ever. Wow, wow! That's what the image is. You're probably just dying to know what the censored or modified version of this game looked like. And for the most part, it's the same, just without the original Pat Guy intro. And the and they tamed back the Atomic Edition. But let's, let's see what happens when I just so much as change the disc here to the censored version of the Pack Pack. Let's see what the icon looks like for the disc. And I just damaged the... Oh, no. Oh. Oh, okay, it looks exactly the same, and it crashed immediately, so that's great. Actually, that crashed the entire computer. Wow. <laughs> Don't... I, th I think this is just Windows 98 becoming unstable now. Damn it. I can't do anything. Alright, well, reset. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I just wasted a whole lot of time. I was actually thinking I was recording, but instead I had the preview open and not the recording, so I'm an idiot. Um, so there goes a good hour of my life. <laughs> so th this is going to center and bring back down to earth this video to simplify it because I was getting a little bit lost in the gameplay. Um, this is what the Pack Pack quote unquote centered version looks like when you when you throw it in the drive there. It's not a Pac-Man face anymore. And here's the menu. Same music. Um, as you can see, Pack Guy is no longer just Pack Guy. The original Pack Guy is no longer at the top. You don't have Value Soft in the corner. Um, instead, you have sort of this help thing. Um, Pack Guy is actually in mini games. The original Pack Guy. So if we play this, uh, and the description's a little bit different. Don't have the person playing the piano anymore. But you still have the blood. You don't have the skull, don't have that little video FMV intro. And it's sort of a, a censored version, so let me try and play it again. Except this time I'm going to use the cheat code that re-enables the blood and gore. And it can turn it on and off at will. So, on, off, on. It's like it's sort of toggle. I'm holding, holding down A and E. And now we have our old intro back. And 
I can turn it off and on, I will. You get the idea. So, uh, I was, I was, I thought I was recording for like an hour. I was not. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> so, but I, I played into like first contact. I need, I need to turn the volume down a lot. I played into first contact for like a while, just pointing out all the music that got used in different places. Um, but I don't really think I needed to go in that deeply into what's going on. Uh, I'm just getting my ass kicked because I'm just talking, but... Uh, I don't think it's necessary to do, like, full gameplay playthroughs of this. I could do it at some point, but I don't really need to. But you sort, you sort of get the difference between versions. I put a lot of the MIDI files I pulled right out of these games and just used in the Last Decade album, for those of you who know what that is on my channel. So that's enough of that. So let me just open up First Contact real quick, just so I can show you guys how the uh, how to access the MIDI files that these games use. So like the current song that's playing, for example. Here you go, C. Windows. Fucking hell. Temp. Uh, usually it's something like this. And you got a MIDI file. Copy that out. As you can see, I've copied a couple out already. Then we can, like, close the game. And go back to this. Now, what was it? MIDI 0. And there it is. And then I, there were some other MIDIs I took out. This one was awesome. the song when he's running on the road. Turn it up a little. PC player test song. Do Remix is from 92.5 FM San Ana. Apparently does music for Dope FM? <laughs> no, Door. Do what? <laughs> so this is just an example of songs that they just took from random other places. Windjammer Demo. Who the hell knows? And there's your Castlevania. <laughs> Alright, so you basically get the idea. I would have shown more uh, first contact footage to just show you where that all where that all uh, came in and how it all made sense. But either way, uh, I don't I don't think that was completely necessary. If I really want to, I can make another full Astral Entertainment tribute video where I look at every single freaking game, and it would be total nonsense for hours. But uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so, uh, important topic for my channel, uh, I'm going to be putting a straw poll in the description, seeing how many of you are interested in more gaming content on the channel. Basically, it's going to have probably like three choices. One's going to say, totally okay with more gaming content on Draga 1, the main channel. Uh, should I branch out, make a different channel separate from Draga 1, uh, and then just put all the gaming videos there on the separate gaming channel? Or a third option saying, don't ever do games. Just don't do it. So, um, let me know. Uh, again, straw polls in the description. And let me know what uh, you think. And uh, it may affect the future of my channel. So, uh, again, uh, the I, I don't want this to be like a complete gaming channel. I know most of you here are not here to see that. So, and I'm not, and don't be worried or concerned, I'm not making a transition over to just gaming. I do really still want to do all the computer stuff as well, but I I do want to do the gaming stuff. That is really fun, and I really like making videos about that. So um, you may see more of that either way. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, this has been a very unusual episode uh, on Draga 1, but uh, hopefully it was enjoyable. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.